Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. God loves somebody that is persistent. Now I call this message tonight seeing myself. Because you can learn so much about yourself by the way you pray. And you know what? One of the greatest things that we can do is know ourselves. Tonight I'm going to teach on three of the parables that are all about prayer. Prayer is astounding. It is absolutely amazing when you think about it that the God of the universe, the God who can do absolutely anything, has invited us to come to him and ask him for whatever we need, not only for ourselves, but we can intercede for other people, stand in the gap for other people who don't know how to pray for themselves. And there's two ministries that God has given to every Christian. One is the ministry of intercession, and the other is the ministry of reconciliation. We are to be used by God to help sinners be reconciled back to God. And every single one of you can be a minister right where you're at in your world by going to work and actually acting like a Christian. Amen. And I can tell you, and I feel this firmly, too many Christians have gotten too much of the world in them and the world can't tell much difference between us and them. And we need to realize that we are living in extremely important times. I mean, I honestly believe that the days that we're living in are the most evil that we've ever dealt with. And I don't want to be negative, but I don't think it's going to get better. I think it's probably going to get worse because I think that we're getting closer to the time when Jesus is going to return. And, and, and even if he doesn't return in our lifetime, we should live every day like he's going to. I wonder how many things we'd change in our life if we knew Jesus was going to come in the morning at 8 o'clock. <laughs> and so we should live that way. And you, if you're alive in this day and hour, you, now listen to me, you are very important to the cause of Christ. And each one of you, you are very important. Don't ever let the devil convince you that you have no importance, that you just don't have a purpose. Every single one of you is important, and you can just, in your neighborhood, in your schools, when you go to the marketplace, your place of employment, just, just being happy, just being peaceful, just being good to people. You'd be amazed how quick people are going to want to know why you can be the way you are, and once they start asking you questions, then you don't have to feel like you're trying to share Jesus with somebody who doesn't want to hear it. And so you're important to the cause of Christ. Every one of us have that ministry of reconciliation, and we have the ministry of intercession. We should pray for other people. I think... Prayer is a privilege, it's not an obligation. It's something that we should be excited about doing. And I think in many ways it's taken on too much of a religious connotation. It's like something we feel that is our duty that we have to do. And I'm all for having set times of prayer. I have certain times, time every morning that I spend with God. But I think we need to learn how to do what I call pray your way through the day. And God not only invites us to pray, and I want you to get this, but he tells us to come boldly and to be persistent 
Imagine that. Come boldly because I'm able to do more than you can ever hope, ask, or think. God doesn't want us asking for little things. He wants us to ask for things that our mind, we, we can't even wrap our mind around it. It's like, God, I'm having a hard time believing that you would do this for me, but I'm gonna ask anyway because you say you can do more than I dare. And maybe some of you need to be a little more daring in your prayers, and you need to start asking God for bigger things. And of course, we're not worthy. We don't deserve it. By all rights, God shouldn't do anything for us. But that's the great thing about it, is he doesn't do things for us because we're good. He does them because he's good. But never forget this, he says in James, you have not because you ask not. So some of you need to get your asking stirred up again. All right, the peril of persistence in asking, Luke 11, five through 13. Then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says, friend, would you lend me three loaves of bread? For a friend of mine, who is on a journey, has come to visit me, and I have nothing to serve him. Now, I learned a lot from this, just about my ministry and my preaching. It's like, you come to me for help, but I have nothing to give you unless I go to my friend Jesus and ask him to give me what you're asking me for. And we all need to realize that we really don't have the ability to help anybody or to do anybody any good if we don't constantly go to God asking him for what we need to give them. Amen? The minute you become independent and think you can do it on your own, that's the minute that you start toward failure and decline. And from inside, he answered him, don't bother me, the door's already been shut and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up now and give you anything. But I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything just because he is his friend, because of his persistence and boldness, persistence and boldness, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say this to you, ask and keep on asking and, you, and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door will be opened unto you. It almost sounds like God is saying, come on, just see if you can bother me. <laughs> I mean, I've gotten a hold of this, and I, I tell God, not in a disrespectful way, but if there's something I know that is a promise in his word that somehow or another the enemy has taken from me or is blocking me from having, I will tell God, I am not going to shut up about this <laughs> until I see a change. You know why? I have scriptural backing that tells me that God likes that. Yeah. Amen? For everyone who keeps on asking persistently, <laughs> receives, and he who keeps on seeking persistently finds, and to him who keeps on knocking persistently, the door will be open. I wonder how many of you have given up on praying about something. Maybe you've prayed about it a year and nothing's happening, and so you just, eh, you know, it's not gonna happen. You go on to something else. I prayed for my father's salvation on and off for 30 years. And I remember one day, I just got really bold and I said to the Lord, I said, you know what? If nothing else, I'm asking you to save him, do it as a favor to me. Because after all the abuse and what he did to me in my life, and now you're allowing me to help all these other people around the world, I don't want to help all them and see my own father go to hell. So I'm asking you 
even if he don't want to be saved, do it as a favor to me. And you know what? He was 83 or something when he received Christ, but he was a changed man. I got to baptize my father who had abused me, and uh, he passed away three years later. He never had a good life because of the way he lived, but I'm telling you, don't give up. Don't give up. If it's something that you really believe that God has put in your heart or is in the Word, don't give up. Now, you don't want to be belligerent or have any kind of a you owe me this attitude, but it's not wrong to just tell God, this is in your Word, this is your promise, and I am not going to leave you alone. Come on. Don't sit around and watch your kids go to hell. Keep at it. You be bold and, and tell God, these are my kids, and I'm not going to sit around and watch them go to hell. The devil is not going to have them. And God, I am going to bother you until I see a change in their life. God loves somebody that is persistent. Now, I called this message tonight, Seeing Myself, because you can learn so much about yourself by the way you pray. And you know what? One of the greatest things that we can do is know ourselves. Learn to be very, even painfully honest with yourself about yourself, because you can admit that you have a problem and still not come under condemnation. God doesn't reveal problems in our life to us or things that need to change to condemn us. The devil does that. But he does convict us, and what he wants us to do is own up to it and admit it. And so, here's one question I want to ask. Are you the kind of person who gives up easily? How long can you last if the devil just keeps it up and keeps it up and keeps it up and keeps it up and keeps it up? How long before you get mad at God? How long before you get a bad attitude? How long can you have a problem and keep being nice to other people? Come on. Amen. You know, it's interesting. We spend 40 years living a life of sin and doing everything wrong, 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 wrong. Then you become a Christian, you think you do a couple things right and everything should turn around. <laughs> Let me tell you, you gotta be ready to do what's right over and 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 over. And I don't even suggest that you do it with a motive of getting some kind of reward. I don't think that's good either. I think we need to do what's right because it's right. Come on. It's the same way I feel about giving. I don't think that we should give to get. I don't, I don't think that's a good motive. I think we should give because we love God, we appreciate what he's done for us, and we wanna see other people help. And there's a promise attached to that that if you bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so great that you not, cannot contain it. And my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Don't expect to have God meeting your needs if you're not giving. Persist in it. Even when you're having financial issues, persist in doing what's right. I want to see a few people get a, get a few more spiritual muscles here tonight and just maybe shake off some of that lethargic. <laughs> just get rid of that and just say, no, there's a life that Jesus died for me to have, and I am going to have it.
What father among you, if he asks for a fish, will instead give him a snake? Or if he asks for an egg, what father would give him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give, I want you to watch what he says, the Holy Spirit to those who ask and continue to ask him. Now, we're gonna have our eyes open tonight some about prayer because I think a lot of times we just, we pray wrong. We pray for our problems to go away, which, go ahead and do that, I do that too, but you're, you're not gonna find a prayer in the Bible that tells us to do that. But, I mean, I've thoroughly examined and preached on the prayers of the Apostle Paul. They're in Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, Philippians 1, Colossians 1. And you cannot find one prayer that he prayed where he asked for anybody to be delivered from their circumstances. What he prayed was that they would endure whatever came with a good temper. So, how often do you pray for that? Well, God, I want this to go away, but until your timing is right, help me continue to be good to people, help me not to get bitter, help me not to blame anybody, help me not to be jealous of other people that aren't having a problem right now. How many of you are with me tonight, you understand what I'm saying? See, really, what God wants more than giving us everything we want is he wants us to be stable. Not up and down with our circumstances, but like Jesus, the same all the time. And that can be your greatest witness to your family, and that can be your greatest witness to the other people that you're around. To be honest, I think you can preach every day and never open your mouth. Amen? And so here we see that he goes through this ask and keep on asking, knock and keep on knocking, seek and keep on seeking. And then the example he gives of what we should ask for is more of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> now, let's talk for a minute about the Holy Spirit. Because first of all, he's the one who helps us pray. He shows us how to pray if we don't know what to pray for. And he's our advocate. He stands before God and pleads on our behalf in intercession. Anybody who's born again has the Holy Spirit. But the Bible also talks about being filled with or baptized in the Holy Spirit. And there are some denominations that teach that and some that don't. But the Bible does, and so we're gonna go with the Bible, not denominations, okay? And we are going to be in serious trouble if we stop realizing that we need to be filled and ever filled with the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter five, verse 18, it says, be filled and constantly guided by the Holy Spirit. Another translation that I like even better says, be ever filled with the Holy Spirit. I think every day in your prayers, one of the things you should ask for is fill me full to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. I don't want to just have the Holy Spirit, I want the Holy Spirit to have me. Amen? So maybe you've been struggling a little bit in your prayer life, and if you want to take a few notes, I'm going to tell you lots of really cool things that you can pray for, and it's going to really perk up your prayer life. Pray every day that God would strengthen you to be able to behave the way that you should behave. Don't just get up every day and try. Because I can tell you, you'll fail. Without God, you'll fail. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But the Holy Spirit is our strengthener. Paul prayed in Ephesians 3.16. We pray that you might be strengthened with all might and power in the inner man through the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. 
Pray that God will, that the Holy Spirit will fill your personality every day. How many of you could use a little more, a little personality upgrade? Amen. You're gonna be amazed at what God will do for you even in the material realm if you stop praying for everything in the material realm and start praying for spiritual things that you need. God will take care of the rest. Seek first the kingdom, his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. Here's what God said to me one time and I think he wants me to share it with you. You take care of his business, he'll take care of yours. You take care of his people, he'll take care of you. I'm gonna say it again. You tend to God's business, which is people. You take care of other people, God will always take care of you. He will always take care of you and meet your needs. Don't you ever just get worn out from trying to take care of yourself? I mean, really. Some of you are just exhausted <laughs> from trying to get what you want. Dearly beloved, I'll act like the Apostle Paul. <laughs> Realize that if you're doing what God wants you to do, he will give you everything that is right for you to have. And if God doesn't want you to have it, why do you want it anyway? Because it's not gonna make you happy. So, the Holy Spirit is our helper. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I need help. Every day, not just some days, every day. He's our teacher. When you open up your Bible to read, Holy Spirit, teach me. Don't just sit there and try to understand it. Holy Spirit, teach me from the Word today. When you come to something like this and you're gonna hear a speaker, Holy Spirit, teach me. Because if he doesn't help me, I can't help you. He's our guide. Oh my goodness, do we need so much guidance in our life these days. Our strengthener, our intercessor, our advocate, our comforter. My goodness, our comforter. We need so much comfort today because the world is pretty uncomfortable. And then I love this part. I don't know if you've got around to loving this or not, but I love, love, and so appreciate that the Holy Spirit convicts me of sin. I mean, I absolutely love it when God makes me aware. You, you don't need to say that. Yeah, don't, don't act like that. <laughs> you just need to go back and apologize. Having the Holy Spirit filling your life and guiding you and helping you and teaching you and convicting you of sin, it's the only way we're gonna get through this life and not just fall apart. Every day, pray, Holy Spirit, fill me, baptize me afresh with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, with the Holy Spirit, there also comes gifts that we don't talk about nearly enough in the church. Supernatural endowments of power. I mean, you would have to be like, not a very bright bulb in the package if you didn't want <laughs> all the supernatural endowments of power that you can get. Because the more power you have, the easier life becomes. And so, if you've never heard about these gifts, I have a whole teaching prepared that I'm gonna do sometime this year on this, but the word of wisdom, Knowing what to do in a situation where you don't know what to do. 
word of knowledge. So many people say, man, I can't believe you said what you said when you were preaching. That was, how did you know? Well, you know, the gifts of the Spirit can operate through you and you don't even really know it's happening. And he does it for the good and the profit of all. It's not just for you to show off and say, look what I can do, but it's to help people. God is all about helping people. It tells so much about a person's character by how they pray. We need to learn to pray for spiritual strength and wisdom and to have a Holy Spirit-filled personality rather than just asking for material things all the time. And we should make sure that we pray for others, not just ourselves. Today, we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayer Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they've been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite a long, but they never go to a medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And you know. This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, Yo, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek: van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's, tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash partner. Iedere dag worden we door vele stemmen, gedachten en meningen overspoeld. Hoe kunnen we erachter komen wat God ons door bepaalde levensvragen en dagelijkse uitdagingen zeggen wil? Joyce Meyer legt in dit boek uit op welke verschillende manieren God met je kan communiceren. Bestel nu hoe je Gods stem kunt horen telefonisch op 026... 20 22 100 of bezoek onze website joyce-meyer.nl Hoe zit het met een dagelijkse inspiratie? Inspirerende gedachten levert de dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce per e-mail. Meld je gratis aan.